Hey comic book fans, welcome to the Comic Fix, episode 37.1. And as of today's reviews, I am going to be going, diving deep into the world of Marvel. I know, I know what you're all saying. I come to you for DC News and DC Comics. Well, I decide to open up my eyes to the bigger world of the comic industry by looking at Marvel. And so what I'm going to be reviewing today is a first Marvel book, all new X-Men, Issue number seven. Now this book came out last month, but I missed it. And, you know, I was just thinking, I was like, I'll pick it up someday. And do you know what today is? Today's the day I pick it up. So I picked this book up. I read issue one through six. I really enjoyed it. But, you know, there were some times in there where the story just didn't seem like it was going along as, as fast paced as I wanted it to. In this issue, it keeps on with the status quo. It has young Cyclops going through the future and seeing how much of an evil person he is now. And him looking at it and being like, who am I really? Am I really this monster that I'm seeing in the future? Well, you have Mystique in this issue basically just putting ideas into young Cyclops' mind. The way that Brian Michael Bendis does the, the like the way that uh, he does the communication between uh, Cyclops and Mystique was really awesome to behold. You really feel that Mystique is just that little devil that's right on Cyclops' side just putting bad ideas into his mind. But he can't open up his mind to the ideas of like Wolverine or anybody like that. He's just seen what he has become and he's afraid of what that is. And he doesn't want to face it at all. But the way that Mystique just goes about it, you really just get the sense that she does care about Cyclops and that she does want to change. But at the end of the issue, you find out there's a little bit more that meets the eye. I really did enjoy this issue. I love the artwork. I love the writing. And the way that Brian Michael Bendis is going about the story, it feels so unique. And it feels like I jumped on to an X-Men title at the perfect time. I've been reading All New X-Men and Uncanny X-Men, both of them by Brian Michael Bendis. And they're definitely going around the same pace. And the pace is a little slow. But when those action scenes happen, when we finally get the scene between Cyclops, young Cyclops, and the now Cyclops, the, that meeting will be so epic because of these choir issues where we're getting more of the plot going and more setup. Now, this may be six issues of setup, but it's really damn good setup. I'm interested to see where this book's gonna go. So, for all new X Men issue number seven, I'm going to give a big old thumbs up. I'm going to say it's David Lee approved. Go out and pick this book up. The next book I'm going to be reviewing is Animal Man issue number 18. Now, with this issue, right on the cover, it says, This is the most tragic day in the life of Buddy Baker. And you see this awesome, awesome cover of Buddy Baker just in pain and agony. Now, this one right here is the conclusion the final conclusion of Rot World. Now, the the totems of the Rot, they went to Animal Man and Swamp Thing and said, we don't like the balance that is happening with Anton Arcane. We need you guys to fix this. This is not our plan. This is not what we want. And so what the Rot does is they, they send Animal Man and Swamp Thing back to the present and for them to fix everything. Now, Animal Man is at the point where his daughter goes and gives up her life for her family. Now, Animal Man goes and stops this. The tragedy that ensues was something that I was not expecting whatsoever. There's a point in there where you just see Buddy Baker talking to his wife, and his wife's like, I am tired of this. I am tired of the danger that you have put my family in. I love you to death. The one thing that this uh, Jeff Lemire has been doing in the series is that he's been having Buddy Baker's wife basically telling his, her mother that I knew what I was getting into at the beginning. There was no 
uh, there was no communication problems about the dangers that could ensue with my husband being an animal man. And at the point where Buddy Baker and his wife are talking to each other, you can just see in the, the writing the pain that Buddy Baker's wife has gone through the last couple months. And it's so awesome to see the way the execution of Jeff Lemire's writing in this issue. The artwork is fantastic. And the emotions that are felt in this issue are bar none some of the best stuff I have read in quite a while. Animal Man is a, such a unique book that it feels so different from any other book in the big two. There are a couple books out there that just have this uniqueness to them. And those books are Animal Man, Hawkeye, Swamp Thing. Those three books right there are so unique and so different from the big two that you just keep on coming back and not knowing what to expect. And then to see this cover of the worst day that Buddy Baker's ever going to have, you believe it. And at the last two pages, you're going to be a shock of what you see. And this shock was not ruined by the internet. And so as you're going through the story, you, you're expecting something bad to happen. And when it does... That's when you're just looking at this book, you're like, oh my god. Jeff Lemire's writing is so good in this that you feel the emotion all the way through. And then the artwork in here is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I can easily tell you that this book right here is definitely going to be in my top 10 for this month. This issue surprised the hell out of me. I love myself so animal man, but this book right here, this issue, concluded Rot World in such a way, I cannot wait to read the next issue and see where Jeff Lemire is going to take this series. So in the end, El Man issue number 18 gives a huge ass thumbs up and of course, of course, a David Lee approved. The next book I'm going to be reviewing is Avengers issue number 7. Now I read Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four run. It was freaking amazing. Now, with me trying to open up my mind to the world of Marvel, I decided I'll give John Hickman's Avengers a try. Now, I do know with John Hickman, he has some grand ideas. And sometimes those ideas are not as well conveyed in one issue. Sometimes you have to have multiple issues to get the full message. Now, in here, we get the White Event. Now, this White Event is going and destroying alternate realities, I believe. And it's all a little bit too much for my first issue. I'm not really grasping on where this book is going from this one issue. Now, I have read issues one, two, and three, which were just really almost self-contained and just John Hickman starting his run with a bam. Now, this one does feel like a bang, but the execution in this issue was a little bit lacking. I thought that the story elements in here were a little too much because I didn't really understand the whole world that John the Hickman has been building up. Now, what is this white event and why should I care? And who the hell is this um, strange college student that I've been following around? Now, at the end of this issue, you definitely do get some clarity on what the whole plot line is. But going through this issue, I was really much just scratching my head and just trying to comprehend everything that John Hickman is trying to tell me. Now, what I think would be best is if I went back and read um, all the books, all the issues leading up to this current issue. This was not the perfect jumping on point. But John Hickman has a way of his writing to just make you intrigued. Every single time the last panel happens, you're just like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen next. Now, with Avengers, am I going to pick up next issue? Yes, I am. I am intrigued by that last panel. But that last panel kind of did remind me of uh, Spider-Man's running days with Alpha. Just a kid who has either been picked on and now he's got some amazing powers. That's kind of the gifs I got from it. But overall... It was a pretty decent book. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It was really just in the in-between. This book has potential to be a thumbs up. But for now, it's just in the middle ground. It's in limbo for me. I'm going to be picking up the next issue. And this is just me giving a 
the whole Marvel Universe a try. And I think once I comprehend the Marvel Universe more, the more I will be seeing just the little... Uh, the little things that they put into the book. Because like, I go in a DC book and just, since I know the world, it's just like, I was like, oh, hey, that's so cool. That's what they're doing. But for Avengers issue number seven, it's going to get a limbo. But it has potential just to be on up and up. Now, if you guys haven't noticed the pattern, I have been going by alphabetical order with my reviews. And the next one up is Bedlam issue number five. Now, Bedlam has been a book that each and every issue has been almost a redefinement of what this series can be. Now, the first issue was more of a superhero type of book. The second issue was about redemption. And the third, fourth have been mostly about a detective book. Now, with the fifth issue, we get more of the detective parts of it. We got Fillmore Press and the detective going and trying to figure out who is Archangel and how can they stop him from all these mass murderers. The story in this issue had the least WTF moments in here. There was no scene in here where you see Matt Red going and banging cats against the walls and seeing him being rehabilitated. There's nothing like that. This was the most safe issue of the whole entire series. But is that bad? No, it's not. We still get a little bit more of the story, but it just, this issue did not feel like it went anywhere. And that's the only bad negative things I can say about this one. This issue right here was definitely the weakest out of the whole entire series. But does that make it bad? No, it doesn't. Bedlam has been one of those gems in the rough that's just come out of nowhere. And has just been so unique. And I'm sad to see with this issue, the uniqueness of it kind of went on the wayside. I didn't really feel that this issue had anything it wanted to say. But at the end, the last panel, you definitely tell that the book is going to take a turn that's going to be what the book needs. Now, issue five just feels like a point A to point B book and didn't really have anything that made me go, what the hell am I doing? Or what the hell am I reading? What the hell am I looking at? This was the most safe that I've seen Bedlam be. So in the end, Bedlam issue number five is not going to get a thumbs down or a thumbs up. It's going to get in the middle. It is in limbo. I mean... This, issue, this series, I'm still going to be picking up because after the first four issues, I'm in it for the long haul. But issue number five was definitely the weakest out of the five. So in the end, Bedlam Mission number five gets a limbo.